Okay, so far we talk about uh, the most known uh, hash functions starting from MD4, then MD5, RIPE MD, SHA1 and SHA2. So we use this hash functions when we are storing passwords, as I already mentioned at the beginning. But the thing is that the method we use, you know, putting a salt value and calculating the hashing value thousands of times is an ad hoc solution. So until recently, there weren't any standards or anything to how to take the hash of a password. So this is why uh, academicians initiated a competition called password hashing competition because password hashing is everywhere. There was an established standard to fulfill the needs of modern applications and to best protect against attackers. So P password hashing competition was initialized by Jean-Philippe Almoso in fall 2012. You can visit the webpage see the, how this competition went and how it ended. It had received 24 submissions. Nine finalists were announced in December 2014. And in July 2015, Argon2 was announced as the winner. So we actually have a hash function that is designed for the story uh, hashing passwords. And it is kind of designed so way that uh, it would be hard to produce ASICs for this kind of algorithms. Okay, the, one of the main idea was behind that. But for other finalists, I received special recognition. I list their name here, Katena, Lyra2, Makwa, and Yescript. I'm deliberately mentioning this because Lyra2 is actually used in many cryptocurrencies as the hashing puzzle. Okay. So I don't know why the designers of the cryptocurrencies use that one. Maybe they designed the algorithm, uh, they designed their cryptocurrency before the finalists were announced, or for some reason, uh, Lyra were suitable for their case. So it should be good to know these algorithms, OK? So uh, we have SHA-2. It is secure. Then why we need a SHA-3, right? If we already have a good and non-broken algorithm, why do we need an another one? So. A SHA-3 competition was held years ago because MD4, MD5, and SHA-1 are broken. Only SHA-2 remained, but it was very similar to previous designs. If you remember the pictures I have shown you, they are almost identical, right? We are adding just a few words, you know, adding more rotations, uh, addition of patients, and so on. So uh, we said that if, uh, since this is very similar to the previous ones, and if somebody breaks SHA-2, then almost every security is lost, right? Because we use SHA-2 SHA almost in everywhere, right? We use it in the cloud, on the internet, we use it on the cryptocurrencies and so on. So for this reason, NIST announced a hash competition starting from 2007 and ended in 2012. It received 64 submissions and uh, four submissions had Turkish designers. Unlike previous competition, NIST allowed designers to make small modifications to their algorithms when they, if they wish to run two. And there is a dedicated web page to this competition. It is called SHA3 Zoo. I strongly recommend you to visit it. And uh, the winner of the competition is Ketchak. Now it is referred to as SHA3. The finalists were Blake, Russell, JH, and Skane. And the run to eliminates were these algorithms, uh, Blue Midnight, Wish, Cubehash, Echo, Fugue, Hamsi, Lufa, Shabal, Shabai 3, and Simt. And these are the eliminated algorithms in the round two. So these are somewhat important to us because uh, most of these parts are used in uh, hash puzzles in cryptocurrencies. So some cryptocurrencies use multiple hash functions for their hash puzzles. This complexity is expected to prevent efficient ASIC development. So in the X11 algorithm, there are 11 uh, hash functions chosen from the SHA-3 competition. So instead of using a single hash function, you uh, consecutively use all of these hash functions when you have an input. Okay. So this way, it will be very hard to produce a dedicated hardware that is optimized for all of these 11 algorithms. So this was the main idea. But people generated ASICs for this. So designers said that maybe we can come up with a harder one by adding more algorithms like Hamsi and Fugue. 
So th this time we have 13 algorithms. In this scenario, it is 15. In X16, we had the previous 15 algorithms plus SHA-512. And X16R, the order of these algorithms are randomly uh, determined. So depending on the uh, hashing puzzle you solve for the block, in the next block, the order of the algorithms are determined from the previous value. So this makes it really hard for the ASIC developers to uh, optimize all of these algorithms on the hardware. Uh, there's also X17, which consists of these algorithms. Okay. So uh, I told you that Ketchak was the winner. It was designed by Guido Bertoni, John Damon, Michel Peters, and Gilles Van Aft. So uh, John Damon was also the designer of AES with Vincent Raymond. So there is a, a idea that if John Damon is in your team, you win the crypto competition. This is why if you are planning to attend any crypto competition in the future, try to convince John Damon to be in your group. So this time, uh, unlike the previous ones, this is a sponge construction. So the message digest link is identical to SHA-2 because we are choosing SHA-3 in the case that if SHA something happens to SHA-2, we want to uh, you know, move on to SHA-3. So the message digest link should be the same. But since this is a sponge construction, there is an internal uh, state, which is somewhat huge. And the block sizes are also uh, huge in this respect. OK, so this is used in Ethereum proof of work algorithm ET hash. Let me read it for the remark here. In its proof of work algorithm ET hash, Ethereum uses Ketchak, but it should be noted that it is slightly different than the standardized version of Ketchak, namely SHA-3. A late change in the standardization process of SHA-3 resulted in a different padding than the one used in ET hash. Thus, sometimes the used hash algorithms in ETH are referred to as Ketchak 256 and Ketchak 512 instead of SHA 3 256 or SHA 3 512. Okay, so Ketchak is used in Ethereum a lot, but uh, it is somewhat different in the, than the standardized version. So recall the picture of the sponge construction. You have an internal state. You feed the message, you perform the F operation a lot, and then you produce the output. So this F, F operation in the Ketchak is consists of many operations. And actually, the overall idea is as follows. Your internal state now represented as a three-dimensional object, OK? So we you know, represent uh, rows like this columns like this and you know we slice it as a two-dimensional object and the lane is in the z coordinate so all of the different operations modify this internal state uh, by affecting sometimes slices sometimes rows columns or lanes this is why uh, it is represented with different colors so catch a chi function actually uh, as you can see it is blue so it affects the rows so to each row, this chi function is applied. So it simply consists of nuts and an XOR gates. So this way you provide actually some confusion. Then Ketchak P function changes the places of these cubes uh, in the slices. So it actually tells you which word is moved to which place. Then Ketchak row function works on the lanes in the three-dimensional object. So you provide diffusion this time on the z-coordinate. So this one was, sorry, this one was on the x and y-coordinates. This one is in the z-coordinate. And finally, Ketchak theta function actually affects these uh, reported words, let's say. So as you can see, the design is somewhat complicated and it is really hard to implement SHA-3 by yourself. At a project I tried to implement it by myself. And I think I failed it in my first 20 trials or something. The result didn't look correct. So you can use the reference implementation if you prefer. But most of the time, again, it is hard to implement. So, but we know that since it is different than the previous designs, we know that this one is a good candidate 
as an alternative. So uh, sometimes you can prefer SHA-3 instead of SHA-2. Both of them are secure, but the choice depends on you. Again, uh, Bitcoin uses SHA-2 and Ethereum uses SHA-3. Uh, 